so I'll yield five minutes to uh, the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Chu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Russell, I wanted to expand on Congressman member uh, Jan Schakowsky's questions about small business. I am a member of the House Small Business Committee, so I understand how the U.S. government's small business lending programs underpin so much of our economy, uh, supporting business growth and, and employment. But what many of my colleagues may not realize is that the SBA's loan guarantee programs frequently operate at zero subsidy. And that means that despite offering billions of dollars in government-backed loans to small businesses that otherwise would not secure affordable financing on the private markets, these programs typically require no appropriations from Congress. They don't cost our taxpayers anything. But a breach in the debt ceiling would be catastrophic for these programs, which do not even contribute to the federal debt. Even if SBA were to find a way to continue offering loans, they would require exorbitantly high interest rates because the government would have no other way to guarantee the loans. So could you spend some time talking about how these programs contribute to the small business economy and discuss the potential impacts to the lending environment if SBA could no longer offer low interest loans? Thank you so much for that question. It's really, really important to understand how that little ecosystem works, right? Because SBA works with many banks across the country to work with small businesses. And those are banks that are taking on uh, the guarantees from SBA and understanding how to work with small businesses specifically. And that's not necessarily federal contracting small businesses. It is all small businesses across the board. So when you remove that, then you're talking about the mom and pop organizations. You're talking about small businesses that are in high technology. You're talking about such a huge part of the American economy. You know, in my comments, we talked about 32 million small businesses. That's a huge number of American workers where that understanding of having some level of support from the Small Business Administration is critical to that business getting up and develop. Even for the gentleman speaking earlier about how he started his small business and now he's out of debt. Well, that's important to understand because so many small businesses are starting. I started my business without debt at all. I started my business at my kitchen table with 500 bucks, right? And so while some have that opportunity, others may not have that opportunity. And so it's our responsibility to give them that opportunity because we know and understand that small business is the undergird of this entire economy, SBAs and their ability to fund the small businesses to get these ideas off the ground. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Dr. Blessing, I wanted to uh, discuss the impacts that debt ceiling hostage taking has had on government's most important and basic functions, including the ability to collect revenue and promptly disperse refunds during tax season. Debt ceiling standoffs, including the one per perpetrated by the Republicans in 2011, have not had any impact on reduced federal spending, but instead have allowed for Republicans to defund crucial government services while spending more on their own priorities like tax, cut, tax cuts for the rich. Now, that's why the IRS's operating function is 20% lower today, uh, even when adjusted for inflation. And this is despite federal spending increasing uh, between 2010 and 2019. Defunding the IRS has led to a tax gap as high as $1 trillion annually, which means even more lost revenue to reduce the deficit. So the result is delayed tax refunds, overburdened staff, and more difficulty getting much needed assistance during the busy crunch before tax day. And any similar stories can be told for similar uh, essential government functions. So can you talk about the impact that debt ceiling fights have had on essential government services like revenue collection and have these service cuts led to deficit reduction? Uh, you, uh, you you make a good point with uh, drawing out uh, all of these different elements that you put together uh, connected to, to debt, uh, debt ceiling standoffs. Um, I, and underfunding the IRS is an incredibly important problem that we should definitely uh, focus on. Um, you know, when we have these different debt ceiling standoffs, when we underfund these different services, um, you know, there's there are real costs uh, to uh, to the government and to our ability to 
uh, to collect what's on the books. Um, you know, it's not it's not a tax raise. It's it's simply you know collecting what's on, on the books. And the tax gap uh, should be a really low hanging fruit item uh, for reformers who are looking to, to kind of build a coalition uh, for uh, you know ways to uh, to start recouping some some revenue in a serious way. Gentlemen's time has expired. <clears throat>